Dr. David, I'm, I'm really a bit scared because once I get the hang of all this miracle business, you know, um, I'm sort of frightened of that there'll be no challenge in life and I'll be walking around like some sort of holy zombie or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of cute because that's the top of. I mean, if we watch, think about those old movies, The Walking Zombies, and zombies are like the walking dead. Yeah. And, and then you start to go deeper into your mind when you realize that the ego made this world up, and this is the ego's field, and that it's already the walking dead. Uh, it, it, this is the land of the zombies. It, it's, it's not like it could become. It already is. It's like when I worked at hospice. <laughs> It was death, death, death all around everything, but I, I was really aware um, that I was just watching a scene and, and I would only seem to speak when I, when I heard a, a really sincere question. In a sense, a lot of the people that were dying that were in their last days or hours would kind of come to me while I was serving them food or doing something, they would have like this urgency. Almost like, you can tell me, you can tell me what this is about. And I'd say, oh, you're innocent and you're loved and you're so perfect. And I would, would just be a conveyance of, of the perfection of all that is. And then they would check out. I mean, they'd, they'd come back, they'd check out all the time. I had a really high checkout rate. Instead of raising the dead, I was giving <laughs> people permission to. Let the body go. You know, go ahead. You you did a great job. You were it was wonderful. Dude. What about my children? Don't worry. No, you're fine. You know. So, but but if people are just like seemingly reporting on something, you know, um, it is a very interesting period of the mind training because you're in a phase right now which which we could call true empathy. Which, what Jesus says, the difference between true empathy and false empathy is when true empathy, you stay with what's real and true. And if you start to become aware of the unlimited nature of life, which is really what miracles are showing, they're leading, pointing us to the unlimited nature of life, then there isn't a sadness uh, or a grief with death, uh, nor is there a question. Uh, even in terms of where do people go and all this stuff, you know, you know, it just starts to drift away, and there's just a state of stillness and silence. And I have gone to some funerals, you know, where I, I have been asked to speak, and they have been very joyful times, um, where I've just expressed a lot of joy, and. And people even started weeping and crying because of the joy. It was like they could feel it. They could feel there was no sense of loss, no sense of missing, a sense of presence, very strong presence there. And they just were weeping because of the presence. And and for me, that is is a very essential aspect of the the mind training. Where I think it gets difficult is. is is when we still have some unconscious beliefs that we could um, let somebody down or hurt somebody's feelings or lose a friend or whatever from our stillness. Like somehow our presence would be offensive to somebody. Love's presence would somehow offend somebody. Those are doubt thoughts. The idea that love's presence could actually offend, you know, is a crazy idea, but, but it's like we're clearing our mind of those thoughts. One time I went to, to Michigan and I was visiting two friends and, and uh, they said that somebody was dying in this community and they were on their deathbed, on, laid out on this couch and they were in their final hours or days or whatever. And then they wanted me to go and I said, okay, I went and, and I went into this home and there was a man laying there on the couch and he was dying. And, and uh, relatives and his sister, different people were in the house. And I actually went in there and it was, it was the feeling of like a very somber house. 
like a very somber house. Heavy, like heavy with grief. I didn't actually feel it, but I could, I could pick up that that's what seemed to be going on in the scene. So I just sat there very still, very still, and I'm always in a state of, I'm always ready on the spot for the spirit, if there's anything to say or do, and, or to just be there in presence in silence. And, and then at some point, the Holy Spirit started speaking through me, and quite a lot came through. And apparently it was a, the man's sister was, was Catholic, and it was a Catholic household. Whatever the Holy Spirit was speaking, uh, at one point the sister just said, Okay, I am very uncomfortable with this. And she looked over at me and she said, and You and your friends are, are going to have to leave. You have to leave the, leave the house and everything. And then the dying man who was laying there, and all the strength he had left in his arm, put his arm, his fist in the air, and said, no. <laughs> Let him continue. Uh, so, and, and then as I continued to speak, I even mentioned the Course, and the dying man said, I studied the Course of Miracles. And there were parts of the Course of Miracles that I did not understand. And I want to hear what this man has to say. And this, the Catholic sister just sat, <laughs> zipped it, sat down and the Holy Spirit continued. Now, if that was David in there, there's no way, you know, you and your friends are going to have to leave. I probably would have just tucked my tail between my legs and <laughs> I would have walked out. But, but the, the, the voice just continued speaking, you know, it was almost like unfazed by this, you're going to have to leave. It was like the Spirit didn't even skip a beat. To me, that was, that was a real teaching in true empathy, in, in truly staying a servant of the Lord and not getting caught into judgments and criticisms and self-criticisms of embarrassment, humiliation, um, or this, this kind of unworthiness that's in the, the ego mind that just doesn't want to offend. It feels itself as offensive, so it's always guarding against offending anybody. And that's where the people-pleasing comes in. You know, when you're too afraid to let the voice of spirit speak through you, you, you tend to err on the, the side of just people-pleasing. Then you feel all wishy-washy, and you feel like you've compromised, and you feel it's, it's, it's disempowering uh, when you compromise like that. So, I think you're just in a phase of the Spirit's like using you in the sense of true empathy. And it's this unswerving, unflinching dedication to the truth. And this awareness that, that you know, like Jesus says, I did not die. Teach that I did not die is what he's, he's teaching us to do. And your presence in that is very, very important. If it seems like people are offended, if it seems like friends turn away and go, oh, I can't even be around that or this and that, that's okay too. Doubt thoughts will disappear. It's when we, we hold on to people and even if they're very negative and judging and criticism, we say, oh, but that's my friend. You know, people really are people. They're just thoughts. And so when we have thoughts that seem to be very negative around us and so on and so forth, and we're so afraid to lose anybody. No, nothing's being lost, it's just that we're just releasing the, the judgmental thoughts in our minds. And those complaining, whining people that seem to be around us were our complaining, whining thoughts that we weren't quite ready to let go of. And, I mean, it just it just disappears. I get phone calls, I get emails, but these emails come flooding in with sincere questions or phone calls of people that are very, very sincere and very, very loving and respectful and we have this deep connection. But when was the last time somebody called me up and just whine, and whine, and complain, and complain, and oh, it's so bad, you let me tell you how bad it is and this and this. Or you on the phone for 30 minutes and you're like, <laughs> 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 because 
It's like, why would you? Why are you hanging on to those relationships? Why are you clinging and holding to those people? They say, oh, but David, it's mom! <laughs> Who is my father, mother, sister, brother? He that does the will of our Father in heaven is father, mother, sister, brother. Mm -hmm. If it was mom, that's fine too. And, you know, it's like, if you really let her go, if you let the concept go, she will come back reborn. I, I've watched it. I've watched it with my biological family. I let him go. I just said, oh, whatever this construct is, it was made in guilt. <laughs> you know, guilt, 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 guilt. And I said, yikes, I've, I've got to really let it go. So the Spirit said, very good, let it go. Then you let it go, and you wait for it to be given back to you. And you can wait patiently. It can take weeks, months, years. Who's in, who's in a hurry? You know, you're, if you're in the present moment, and in a hurry, you can wait with patience. That's that some line in the Course about infinite patience produces immediate results. I love it. I said, don't try to figure it out. <laughs> it's Jesus. Just, this is how he talks. But you can see where he's coming from. You know, infinite patience produces immediate results. And that's where we're getting into that. That sense of really certainty in our hearts that we are love, that we deserve love, that we can receive, give and receive love. We don't have to compromise with that. We don't have to try to cling and hold on to old patterns.